Today we're going to be discussing what does the Bible say about money and I'm going to cover five scriptures on money. So let's go ahead and dive into it. The first scripture that we are going to be covering is Hebrews 13 5 and it goes like this. Don't love money, be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you, I will never abandon you. In this scripture, God is providing us hope in the face of uncertainty. The scripture says God is a jealous God. He doesn't want us to worship or idolize anyone other than him. He is the one and only God. Moving on to scripture number two, it is Proverbs 23, 4, and it goes like this. Don't wear yourself out trying to get rich. Be wise enough to know when to quit. You see here, the scripture is talking about greed and planning. The proverb is not condemning wealth, but rather it is warning us against the pursuit of wealth because God knows that money alone does not have the ability to satisfy. Moving on to scripture number three, it is Ecclesiastes 5.10 and it goes like this. Those who love money will never have enough. How meaningless to think that wealth brings true happiness. I'm going to cover three verses in part three and they're all in Ecclesiastes. And this first section is saying that a person who pursues wealth never finds joy or satisfaction. Now let's go ahead and move into Ecclesiastes 4, 7 through 8. This is so good. Listen to this. I observe yet another example of something meaningless under the sun. This is the case of a man who was all alone, without a child or a brother, yet who works hard to gain as much wealth as he can. But then he asks himself, who am I working for? Why am I giving up so much pleasure now? It is all so meaningless and depressing. Wow, this scripture is so powerful as it is exemplifying that this person loses all his wealth and is left with nothing. And this final part is Ecclesiastes 5 verses 13 through 17. And it goes like this. There is another serious problem I have seen under the sun. Hoarding riches harms the saver. Money is put into risky investments that turn sour and everything is lost. In the end, there is nothing left to pass on to one's children. We all come to the end of our lives as naked and empty handed as on the day we were born. We can't take our riches with us. And this too is a very serious problem. People leave this world no better off than when they came. All of their hard work is for nothing, like working for the wind. And finally, this verse is telling us that no matter how much wealth or materialism we accumulate here on earth, we cannot take it with us. Moving on to scripture number four, and we are going to read Proverbs 3, 9. It says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. This verse is referencing a law that required the Israelites to give their first fruit of their harvest to God. This is where tithing comes in today, is that we give a portion, 10% of what we receive back to God to thank him for everything that he has done in our lives. And finally, verse number five, which is one of my favorites, is Matthew 25, 21, and it goes like this. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. In the scripture, it is telling us that the faithful stewardship of the servant impressed and pleased his master more than the master's return on investment. You see, God wants to know that he can trust you with the little that you have in order for him to bless you with more. And I implore you that as you go about your day and you start to think about money and your finances, remember these scriptures and also remember that there's nothing impossible for God. If you steward well with the little that you have, God will bless you abundantly. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and if you did, be sure to subscribe and go ahead and click the next video.